I just posted my long-term review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6, and one of the big things that I kind of lean on in that video is the fact that where the Z Fold 6 is now makes me extremely excited for the Z Fold 7. We're at such a good like jumping off point now from the 6 to the 7 that I think that the 7 is going to be really, really good. But guys, there's more than just one crazy new foldable coming soon from Samsung. We also have what is being called the Samsung Galaxy G Fold. You've maybe heard it called the Tri-Fold or maybe the Multi-Fold. That's what we're talking about today because a pretty reliable tech tipster has released a few rumored specifications for this device. Now, just in case maybe you don't know what we're talking about, maybe you've missed these news stories, this device is basically going to be a Z Fold device, but instead of folding once, it's going to fold twice. As you can see here in this image from the very same tech tipster, it's blurred, he said, for his own protection, but allegedly this is what this device is going to look like. And based on a patent that I came across months ago, this was my sort of crude depiction of what I thought it was going to look like. And it's very, very similar. He's got the screen on the other side, but other than that, very, very similar. So this is kind of the general idea for this device. Now, one big difference between this and something like what Huawei has made with the Mate XT is that this device folds inward both times. So both sides of the device fold in and then the other side folds in on top of that, whereas Huawei's device folds in an in and out sort of accordion style configuration. And the last thing you need to know is that it has been rumored from some fairly reliable people like Ross Young that this device is expected to be coming sometime towards the end of this year 2025 so with that out of the way let's take a look at this most recent bit of information from panda flash pro so back in february they had posted this that the tri-folds internal prototypes cameras were as follows we had a 200 megapixel primary so that's probably a very similar sensor to what is in the s25 ultra this is also very similar to what we're expecting from the galaxy z fold 7 same thing goes with this 12 megapixel ultra wide and the 10 megapixel telephoto this really does sound like they are just taking the z fold 7's camera system and slapping it onto this device and that does make a lot of sense because Using the same sensors across multiple devices, it's just going to make everything easier from development to your software. It's all going to just be easier. The selfie camera, 10 megapixel. Now, they did say at the time that the inner selfie camera was unknown, but was expected to be 4 megapixels. Now, that is because they were expecting this device to use an under-display camera for that selfie shooter on the very large 10-inch inner screen. But... He has, as of just yesterday, now said that the prototypes he has heard of, they're not using the under-display camera. They're using a normal hole-punch camera on that inner display, just like Samsung recently did with the Z Fold Special Edition. There have been some reports that Samsung is souring on the under-display camera technology, which I am perfectly fine with. I have never liked them. The camera quality is absolutely terrible and they don't look good either. They have this weird screen door shimmering effect for me. I have some sensory processing issues, so it might just be people like me that are bothered by this, but I literally have to just use good luck modules to disable them, to fill them with black because otherwise they give me a headache. So you may feel differently about this, but that is what the apparent rumors are for the cameras. Now, Panda Flash Pro was not done just simply talking about the cameras. They also did tweet about the battery capacity and the charging speeds. And I would say that both of these are probably likely to disappoint uh, quite a few of you. So they said test charging speed rating is between 23 and 24 watts. So that would indicate a marketing rating of about 25 watt charging. Nothing too crazy or special there. And then as far as the actual battery capacity, I don't think I took a screenshot of this, but they did mention it. And I did write it down in the article below this that they are seeing that it is going to be less than or the prototypes they are seeing are less than 5,000 milliamps, so milliamp hours. So hopefully that means 4,999 milliamp hours because with a large 10 inch screen, you're gonna need all the battery capacity that you can get. If we jump over to this GSM Arena post about the Huawei Mate XT Ultimate, they did pack in a 5,600 milliamp hour battery. So being less than 5,000, 
is definitely more than a little bit disappointing. Again, you're going to have an outer display that's pretty much like a normal phone, something, you know, fairly standard, but opening up into not, you know, an 8-inch display like this device has, my Oppo Find N5, which has a 5,600 milliamp hour battery. It's a 10-inch display. It's even larger than that. So your battery life, yeah, that could be a little bit of a concern. And then, of course, one thing that I always get in the comments when I talk about this device compared to the Huawei device is that because of the Huawei's device, because they, they fold in a different way, you basically have multiple different form factors. You can have it in a phone mode. You can fold out one side of it, and then you basically have like a normal book-style folding phone, something in the ballpark of that size, and then you can fold it out again to get the full screen. Whereas with this G-Fold or G-Flex design, you can only have it in phone mode or fully open because if you open up one side, you don't have anything. You just have part of a screen sticking out, but then this other side's covered. It's not really going to work that way. When you put it all together, I think you really do have a device that is emblematic of where Samsung currently is. On one hand, they're doing something that very few companies have attempted. They're making a folding phone with two hinges in it, in a time when most companies haven't even made a single hinged folding device. But at the same time, they aren't really pushing the boundaries with the other specifications. The camera is a decent primary camera. It's the one that probably the one that they use or similar to one that they use in the S25 Ultra. But the other two cameras are fairly lackluster compared to what Huawei is doing. They're not using silicon carbon batteries like Huawei is doing. They're not pushing the charging speeds like Huawei is doing. And that, again, is emblematic of where Samsung is. In some ways, they are still being adventurous, but in other ways, it does feel like they are not the same Samsung that they used to be. But guys, that is currently all the latest news on the Samsung Galaxy G Fold, Multi Fold, Tri Fold, whatever it is that you would prefer to call that device. Let me know what you think about all this stuff in the comments down below. If you want to help support the channel in a more direct way, consider clicking that join button down below. It'll help make me a little bit less reliant on ad revenue, which would be great for me because it's hard to understand exactly what's going on with that sometimes. And uh, in return for that, you're going to get early access to some video content. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.